Hello everyone, my name is Leo and with this video we will share the guitar gear news of the last weeks. And guys, we are at the episode number 28. So, thank you for your appreciation of these kind of videos. Let's start! Line 6 has released the HX1, which is a very interesting and at the same time pretty limited device. It offers 250 effects and 128 presets, but you can use only one effect at a time. It offers USB-C connectivity to update the device and to use the free HX Librarian app, but it cannot be used as an audio interface. It has stereo inputs and outputs, MIDI connectivity and adjustable impedance curve, but it does not offer AMP modeling technology. Actually, the one standout feature that I found really interesting is the Flux technology. This technology basically allows us to progressively go from one set of settings of a specific effect to another set of settings, just using a foot switch. Basically, you set up the effect parameters starting point, then you set up the end point, and then with the flux foot switch, you can go progressively from the starting point to the end one, also configuring how the transition should occur, for instance in terms of speed. This allows for some real-time control, giving effects movements and allowing us to create pretty interesting effect transitions. Something pretty unique, I think, and let me know if there are other devices with this feature. The price is around 320 bucks. Well, for offering just one effect at a time, I think it's a pretty expensive device. It's definitely up to us to decide whether the Flux Tech which is the real standout feature of this device, in my opinion, is worth the money or not. I would say yes, as for me it opens a whole new level of creativity and expressiveness, which is something invaluable for me. Universal Audio has released the UAFX Lion 68 Super Lead Amp. This unit models three different variations of one of the most iconic amp of all the time, which is the 100 watt Marshall Plexi. That, by the way, is also one of my favorite amps. The three versions are called Super Lead, Super Bass and Brown. The Super Lead is a recreation of the normal Marshall 1959 SLP, the Super Bass has less aggression with a spongier attack and more clean headroom to be used especially with overdrives and fuzzes. And lastly, the Brown wants to replicate the Brown sound of Van Halen, obtained also thanks to the Variac that Van Halen was actually using. Then the unit offers three included cabinet simulations and three others that you can download once you have registered the product. The included cabs are a 25 watt greenback speaker, a 30 watt greenback and a combination of the two Celestion 25 watt greenbacks and two JBL 120. Available upon product registration are a 1x12 electro voice, a 2x12 greenback and a 4x12 vintage 30. We have two knobs to control the volume of the two channels of the Plexi, an output volume level, and then bass, middle and treble control knobs, which are also dual function, meaning that they can control also the reverb room, the presence and an additional boost level. In terms of I.O. we have stereo inputs and outputs and a USB-C port to update the unit that cannot serve as an audio interface. Furthermore, the unit can be controlled via Bluetooth with a dedicated app. As usually, no MIDI is available, which is the major weakness of all these UAFX pedals. 
and that actually is for me incomprehensible. I mean, we have Bluetooth but no MIDI, I would rather prefer the other way around, as with MIDI we can easily control this unit in an Amplis pedalboard setup, and this unit should have been designed to be integrated in a more complex pedalboard. Without MIDI, we cannot use, for instance, a MIDI controller to access all the variants available in this unit, which is a bummer. So this is the fourth amp simulation pedal from Universal Audio that joins the Dream 65, the Ruby 63 and the Woodrow 65. Now Universal Audio basically covers all the most iconic amps in history. I mean the Fender Deluxe Reverb, the Vox AC30, the Fender Tweed and now the Marshall Plexi. I would say that we just need an high gain amp like an EVH 5150 or a Friedman Brown Eye. And all these devices share the same cons that for me are the lack of MIDI control and the price, which is around 430 bucks. I mean, if you pair this unit with the Dream 65 to have a kind of clean tones oriented pedal coupled with a more overdriven to distortion one, you're gonna spend more than 800 bucks. And if you add some effects, you easily overcome 1000 bucks, even getting closer to something like the Fractal FM3 or spending even more than the Eboss GT1000 or a Line 6 Helix. But well, it's definitely up to us, up to you to decide which way is the best one for you. And now let's talk about the new Moore GE1000. I am pretty excited about this new pedal board. As you know, the last new pedal board from Moore uh, I think was the GE300 Lite that I have reviewed in my channel and uh, that was launched around three years ago. Then Moore has somehow diversified its business with new guitars, audio interfaces, etc. without introducing any new amp modeling pedalboard in three years, which is a pretty long period of time. Now things uh, have changed with the new Moore G1000. This new pedal board has been presented at the Music China 2023, which is a major Asian music exhibition. And uh, therefore we have some pictures, but not the full specs. Let's try to describe the modeler. First of all, the form factor really recalls me the G250. And I guess the 1000 has similar dimensions. But the first big difference is in the screen, that is now not only bigger, but also touch sensitive. The foot switch's layout is basically identical between the two units, where the buttons and control knobs layout is a little bit different. One thing I love about the G250 is the row of buttons below the screen, which provides us with direct access to the effect blocks. Here in the G1000 there are two rows of buttons which I guess offer the same functionality of the ones of the G250, but with a more clever design actually. In fact if you look at this picture you can notice the two rows of seven effect blocks in the screen that I think are then replicated in the two rows of physical buttons below the screen. I think this is a pretty clever and ergonomic design. Furthermore, from the same picture, we can deduce that we have now 14 effect blocks in the chain that we can place in whatever order we want, but no parallel effect seems to be offered. Let's now talk about the inputs and outputs, still comparing the G1000 versus the 250. Going from left to right, we should have a USB port, MIDI connectivity, balanced and unbalanced stereo outputs, an headphone out, an external effect loop and a guitar input. An input for external controllers should be missing compared to the G250, even if I'm not 100% sure. Furthermore, maybe we are gonna have improved amp modeling algorithms and I hope for an improved capturing technology. Moore was one of the first pedalboard builder to add amp capturing tech in their devices with their Moore G Labs app, so I hope this will be further developed, for instance allowing us to capture 
a full amp rig also in the computer and not only with a tablet app, etc. I'm really happy that Moore is returning to invest in amp modeling pedal boards and I really hope to be able to bring this unit to the channel and to make some comparison videos with other devices. So stay tuned and subscribe not to miss my future content. TC Electronic has released the new 2290, which basically put the 2290 rack unit in a pedal format. The rack was released in 1985 and discontinued in 2005 and was used by many famous guitarists, Steve Lukather included, just to name one. This is not just a delay, but it offers also chorus, flanger, tremolo, vibrato, phaser, panning, ducking and compression. Therefore, it could easily become the heart of your pedalboard. Among the main features I would mention 128 available presets, 3 foot switches with tap tempo and especially the possibility to control the delayed notes independently from the original sound, for instance adding modulation to the delayed notes, that is something I love doing. On the panning side we get 3 options, our entire signal, including the original sound, will be affected, only the delayed notes pan between the left and right channels or only the original signal is affected. Furthermore, other cool features that were missing in the original unit are the feedback loop for inserting additional effects to the wet signal and the option to use subdivisions to control the modulation block, which are pretty cool options to have at our disposal. The price is around 360 bucks, therefore it is not cheap at all, but being myself a fan of the original 2290, I would really like to try one out, and I think it would easily then become one of the most important effects of my pedalboard. Thank you for watching, please subscribe and ring the bell, as actually Christmas time is coming and I have a lot of new pedals that are gonna be reviewed in the channel. See you soon.